Hendry on 2-2. Strikes out swinging. They went back to the heater. That was 93 from Nasty Nate. Here it is. And it's in there! You can bend the beam into a W! Hey now, you're an all-star. Get your game on, go play. Welcome back to the Railcast Talk podcast. That's Chuck Polaric. I'm Kyle Spanish, and we have all-star closer Nate Alexander. Nate, how are we doing? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, happy, glad that you were able to join us. Um, how was the uh, how was the All Star experience for you? And it was great. Uh, I mean, especially coming from last year. You know, I got released last year from Pioneer League um, about a week into the season. I finally got picked up by the Boise Hawks and just kind of dominated last year. And then heading into this season, I really didn't have anybody contact me at all. Uh, I had a friend, he's in college right now, and he has some connections. He helped me out getting over here to the Railcats. So really appreciative for the Railcats were the only team giving me an opportunity this year. Then, you know, uh, became an all-star. So kind of ups and downs of baseball, I guess. So you, you've had a, a long, a long journey. Uh, I see a lot of uh, independent baseball experience. Yes, sir. Uh, what's, what's that been like for you? Uh, any ball is, it's great. You know, uh, it's a different environment from minor league baseball without a doubt. Uh, I would say minor league baseball is more of a dog eat dog world. And then independent baseball is just a bunch of, you know, guys just coming together and, and trying to grind together to get back into affiliate ball. Before we get into like really depth, I don't want to skip over the portion of where you were actually drafted, uh, by the Marlins. Yeah. Yes, sir. What was that experience like for you? And it was great. Uh, you know, had a couple of teams looking at me. It was Tampa Bay Rays, Marlins, obviously, uh, Angels, and then some other teams that, you know, sent me questionnaires but never followed up anything past that. But, you know, I was looking for my whole life to get drafted. And then finally that day came. I was raking leaves in my house. <laughs> and I guess my my phone was a little bit delayed. I kept getting messages saying congrats. I was like, what for? I haven't gotten picked yet. And then about 30 seconds later is when I found out I got picked by the by the Marlins. That's always a fun experience. Uh, I'm right? sure. You know, something I, I will never experience. So. Yeah. <laughs> they, they still haven't called me. So, yeah, we're still waiting for – I think mine got lost in the mail somewhere, right? I, I think mine's <laughs> delayed by about 24 years. <laughs> well, if you keep grinding, you might have it. I might. I might. I, you know, I, I'm only a month older than you, Nate, so I, I might still have a chance, but I, I highly doubt it at this point. Hey, you, you got to develop the knuckleball. I can show you. Oh, there you go. The, the lost art of the knuckleball. Exactly. I, I do like that. Looking at the – the all-star experience in general, what is something to take away from the all-star experience as a, as a selection, but then also getting there? Uh, as a selection, I mean, it was great. You know, I had a really good season first half. I had some shaky outings where I gave up six runs and then I gave up three runs the next time. Um, you know, all-stars was in the back of my mind, but, if it didn't happen, it didn't happen. I really wasn't focused on that. I was just focused on, you know, going out there each day and trying to do my best. And, you know, um, when I did get selected, man, I, I couldn't stop grinning. <laughs> you know, they Lamar told us a week we couldn't tell nobody because they didn't come out with the, the all-star selection yet. And so it was kind of hard keeping that under wraps uh, for the time being. And then he told me the guys that did get selected so we could talk to, to each other, uh, but we just couldn't tell anybody else mm -hmm. for the time being. But, you know, when we did get there, I mean, it was a great experience. Kansas City, I, I love Kansas City. Never been there before in my life. Haven't been to Kansas before. When we got there, great city, great town. Love the stadium. Um, you know, it was just – just being to get there, getting to be there was a fantastic experience. I think that's, you know, that's kind of the, the highlight, right? But the grind constantly, you, you see the payoff. But there's got to be times where you're not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, when you, you start off a season, you get cut, you ain't got nobody calling you. Um, you're, you hop uh, between this league or that league. You know, even like you said, starting out this year where you don't know where you're going to be. Uh, how do you deal with that in, that 
unknowingness um, mentally? You know, I kind of just, I don't really think about it, you know. I grew up in a Christian household, so my mom always told me to have faith in God. And that's what I've always done. I've never stressed about baseball at all. The only times I've ever had stress was, you know, I have a bad outing. That's pretty much it. Um, but other than that, I just kind of, you know, just let things fall into, fall into place. And it's been everywhere. My whole baseball journey has been I've only got one phone call from somebody, and it led me into – this step and then that door opened to another door just like whenever i got i was coming out of uh, high school i went to a, a 1a 2a taps private school which is the lowest ranking for a high school you know mm -hmm. you know uh texas goes up to 6a now when i was in school it was 5a uh my high school down the street the public school was a 6a or at that time 5a so we're at a 1a slash 2a because <laughs> there wasn't enough teams at the 1A level. I graduated with 23, 24 people. There were 75 people in my whole entire high school. So when you have college coaches looking at that, like, oh, he's just, you know, going to a Christian school, not really seeing any competition. Yeah, he's doing good, but can he compete at the next level, right? So, uh, you know, the only way I got into college baseball is because my brother sent me a <clears> – <throat> A DM, he sent me a text message saying, hey, there's a scouting combine in Houston if you want to go to it. I was a junior in high school going into my senior year. It's the summer. So I go over there. <clears throat> I performed pretty well. I think I topped that at 92. I was sitting like 89, 91. Um, and then Blen texted me a couple of days later said, hey, we really want to look at you. I said, okay. So they said, uh, are you talking to anybody else? I said, no, I'm not. He said, have you committed anywhere else? I said, no, sir. So he said, we really want to get you out for a visit and everything. And so that was the only team that ever looked at me at a, at a high school. And it was only because my brother sent me a text, text message about that scouting combine. Other than that, I had nowhere else to go. And then uh, made the all-star game for junior college. Ended up tearing my, my elbow up. And then... I was already committed to UTSA, thank God, and then got drafted. And ever since then, just, you know, only one or two doors opened up. You know, I went to the Boulders after after I got released. They traded me over to the Pioneer League, and then that's when I got released. So it's just been kind of a <laughs> a roller coaster. Yeah. Uh, Evan, Evan Faith is, is a great uh, a great thing when it comes to this type of a lifestyle. Absolutely. And I, I, for one, can definitely appreciate that. Uh, and that's something that doesn't, uh, you know, I've hosted families for the past, or hosted guys for the past three years. And I, I, I will admit my view of 20 something's kids was very negative because, you know, I see, who my my daughter's friends were, you know, and 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 my son's friends, and not necessarily people that I would be like. These guys are going to be doing brain surgery next month, you know, or or in yeah. ten years. And but then all of a sudden, I get these these ball players that are like, man, these guys are intelligent. And you start to really look at the lifestyle of you don't know where you're going to play next week, uh, you don't know what's going to happen and you really have to be grounded in something. And, and we just talked to, to Howie about that. Uh, and so being grounded in faith, I find is a very common thing for baseball players. Uh, and I think that has a tie to it. It's that you can't really get through this lifestyle uh, without having something to rely on, something to look on to say, Hey, there's something else that's in control here. I just need to do my part. Yep, exactly. You know, this team, this is one of the best teams I've been a part of as far as chemistry wise. Uh, if it's not the best team or yeah, if it's gotta be the best team by far, you know, uh, all the guys click together. Well, majority of us are in Sunday morning chapel with each other, which is great. You know, we all sh pretty much all of us share the same faith. Now, obviously everyone has their di different beliefs, stuff like that, but, you know, we all get together and share communion. It's a true 
a true connection with each other through our faith. That's awesome. I, I, that's something I, I don't, we've never talked about that. Yeah. Have we? <laughs> no, I don't think, uh, uh, I, I know religion can be sort of a touchy subject on, on th certain things, but uh, I don't think we've really touched on it. I mean, people have, a lot of baseball players are really religious. I mean, most of the time that you, they talk, they, they are thankful for uh, what God has provided for them. Uh, but I just don't think we've really got into depth with, with the team in general about, you know, that the chapel, you know, people going to the church together. And that's, I don't, that's the thing that you just normally don't get to see or hear. So it's, it's just an interesting uh, spin yeah. on things. That's one reason why I think me and Chuck decided to start doing this. Just we want to know what you guys are up to. And that's just something that's interesting to me with, with the season that, that, that has been laid out in front of us. What has that chemistry done to kind of get you guys through the season? You know, obviously we're having a, a little rough patch throughout the whole season. Some guys would get hot. And then we get cold. It's it happens throughout mm -hmm. baseball. Yeah, teams lose. I mean, on paper, we're the best team in the league, without a doubt. And we, I mean, even through the trials and tribul tribulations, we still have such a great clubhouse, and within our team, there's been no fighting with each other, which I've I've seen it time and time again. You know. Guys don't like each other. You know, there's clicks. You know what I'm saying? I haven't seen any of that this year at all. And it's just been – it's been great to see. It, clubhouse morales are, are fantastic. We're behind each other's back 24-7. We have each other's back all the time. And I, I love it, you know. Um, but, yeah, it's been it's been a great experience so far. With, with, with that being said, is it something that the – the coaching staff has put in place uh, to kind of keep the locker room, like a, not locker room rules, but like just bringing in the guys that can kind of to blend together. Or is that just like a policing of the players in general? Man, I, I think Lamar did a great job on picking his guys. Uh, I think we just all have really good, you know, personalities and, and bonding experiences we're all we're all older guys you know mm -hmm. uh there's some younger guys on our team um i'm kind of in the middle where you know, i'm one of the older guys on the team but i haven't been up to you know double a triple a of the big leagues like a lot of these guys have and then there's also the guys that are rookies on the team and so kind of just pushing them along uh getting them up to speed you know like i was talking to howie yesterday and we were talking about how this is his first pro experience. And I was like, man, I've been through it. I've been through, you know, low way. I've been through pioneer league, frontier league. I've been through it, through it all, you know, and you're kind of jumping right into it, into the double a level. And I said, dude, you're doing a fantastic job. I said, you're doing amazing. I said, I don't know if I could do that, to be honest with you. Uh, it took me six years in order to get to this level and you jump straight into it and you're doing fantastic. So, I think I, I, there's not really any rules within our clubhouse. We all just kind of we just got we just get it, you know. I think that's what what you just said there is key, because in some clubhouses, you don't tell another player that they're doing good. Yeah, you don't have that conversation, or you don't have that uplifting of of your teammates, because it is a this guy is going to move up or I'm going to move up and I'm going to be the guy that's going to step on him to get up there. And you get a lot of that. And we even see some of that in the American association. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but you saying, Hey, I have a conversation with this rookie and I'm like, Hey man, you're, you're killing it. And you're at a level that I wouldn't have been able to be at at your age or jump right into. I, I think that right there tells you exactly what the clubhouse is like. You guys are For lifting sure. each other up. And, yeah. and how much does that go into your mentality when you go out there to close a game? Uh, I just have faith in my what I what I do, you know. Uh, whenever I'm out on the mound and my ball is on, my fastball is on that day, I, I know it's going to be good. You know, I, I try not to, you know, different guys have their different ticks. A lot of guys like to lock in. 
I kind of like just to, you know, relax, make jokes and not really focus on, you know, what I have to do because when I focus on it too much, it seems I put too much pressure on myself. Try So I try to do the exact opposite, and, you know, just like joke around with the fans. Like yesterday they had uh, little kids up there and I was making jokes with them uh, and I was <laughs> about to go out there on the mound, you know, and I, I was telling them, I was like, you know, I, uh, <laughs> so are the dogs trying to bust special in special guest <laughs> <laughs> get out of here Petey it's alright we're, we're all dog lovers well I have two dogs so I'm a dog lover it's okay <laughs> I, I have chickens so <laughs> well, chick oh, dude. yeah but yeah I, I just try to you know just stay as relaxed as I can and when I too put too much pressure on myself things just uh it's been in the past where just think things just get out of hand and whenever i just relax and just have fun out there my game is exponentially take uh taken off especially I, last year when i got released last year i was putting way too much pressure on myself throughout my whole four years of professional experience and then last year when i got released i said you know what i don't care anymore i'm gonna go out there i'm gonna have fun uh, I'm not going to treat this as a job. I'm going to treat this as I'm a 12 year old kid just out there having fun. And that's when everything just took off. My curveball came along, fastball came along, and it's just been a great experience since then. I've, I've spoke to quite a few pitchers. I, I was a pitcher growing up. Um, I tore my bicep when I was 15 and uh, never got it taken care of. But the, uh, the mental, the, the mental aspect, the mentality, when you're a pitcher, it's so crazy how much it's different between pitcher to pitcher. Mm -hmm. And I've had guys that I've talked to that they're like, you know, I go and I'm just, it's me and the batter and I'm just making him swing or I'm just gonna, I, I just want him to look silly. And, and then you got guys that are like, Hey, I go up there. I'm looking at what my catcher's telling me. I have hundred percent faith in my catcher and I'm putting it where he wants it. And my, my focus is putting it on where, where the catcher wants the ball. And then I got guys that are just like, I'm singing songs in my head. And yeah. I'm just going up there and, hey, let's see if he swings at this. Let's see if he swings at that. And, and I'm just as relaxed as can be. And to me, there's like such a wide range. You got to find what works for you. Yeah, exactly. And I, you know, whenever I'm out there on the mound, obviously I'm <laughs> forced to – get locked in, but I still try to take myself out of that and start trying to like make jokes and like, you know, just think about different things on the mound. So I'm not, you know, too locked in, just stay relaxed, you know? Uh, but when I'm out there on the mound, I'm just thinking about, okay, it's the hitters not even up there. It's me and the catcher and that's it. And as long as I get my fastball high and it has ride, I'm good. It, most of the time, I mean, this is the first time that I've been able to really talk to a, a pitcher on the podcast. Most of the time, it's mostly been infielders or a catcher, you know. But in in a closer role, what is the the mindset? Maybe something different between like going in and closing a game out and just going in for a relief appearance. Kind of going back to just staying relaxed. Whenever you're in a tight situation and it's a, you know, we're up by three or we're up by one safe situation. Um, I just still try to stay relaxed, you know, try not to do too much. When you do too much, you start forcing yourself to get out of your rhythm. And I just thinking about my mechanics down the mound and just getting my, getting, you know, getting my fastball just, in here if you'll see me sometimes when i'm on the mound i go like this is because i'm trying to mentally visualize myself getting my arm through the ball get behind the ball instead of around because sometimes i'll get around it like this and my ball will sink or cut i'm just trying to visually get behind the ball and get through it but i mean other than that uh i think if you think too much about it it's for me at least and when i think about too much uh put too much pressure on myself, which I try to eliminate that. Being a, a closer or a reliever, mostly closer, I mean, you were, you and I believe Ty were the first two that were signed for the 2024 20, season back in 2023, okay. if I'm not mistaken, I believe. But, you know, coming in and stepping into being the closer and, and solidifying yourself right off the bat, going nine innings or I should say eight innings, 
you know, what's the the bullpen experience like? Bullpen experience, uh, I mean, it's great. We're out there. <laughs> I probably can't say too much of what we talk about, but uh, me and Denson were talking about this the other day of uh, how, like, you know, fans are probably asking all the time to each other, like, what are we talking about? Are we talking about pitch grips? Are we talking about, you know, what the batters are doing? We're not talking about any of that. We're talking about, <laughs> you know, just stuff that happened within the news or just something just completely off the walls, you know? I, I mean, a, a starter, I, I would imagine, has a, obviously a different preparation. They're probably more really looking at uh, the lineups and pitches and, and, and so on and so forth. But when you're a closer, is it more of a less you're on the offensive side of things? It's like, I'm going to challenge you and you're you're going to hit my stuff or you're going to... You know, so yeah. is there a lot of game planning behind batters or is it just kind of going up there and it's my stuff versus your stuff? Uh, for me, I can't speak on anybody else, but for me, especially, I'm going to throw my, my best stuff at you. I'm not going to throw to your weaknesses. I'm going to throw to my strengths, right? So my strengths are, you know, fastball. And then when I get you two strikes, I'm going to throw you a curveball. If that doesn't work, throw you a fastball again, see if you can hit it. I talk to pitchers about it. It's interesting is – you're playing you're you're up there you don't have much time to think you really have to go into if you're going to beat me you're going to beat me with my best pitch you know and that's that's the battle right it's just so fast there's a lot of different questions i could go yeah. with it's just it's just fascinating <laughs> hard, aren't they? um yeah it's not that the the uh that we're running out of questions it's just what questions to ask is oh, you know bring it um you know, you, you see these, you know, starting pitchers get, you know, anywhere from five to eight innings, depending how their outings go. And they get five days off, you know, yeah. outside of uh, a closer, your, your one inning, how would you, I guess, a, a, a five inning start for a starter, how, what does that compare to a one inning for a reliever or a bullpen arm or a closer, I should say? You know, it's tough because those guys have multiple innings to adjust to the batter and adjust to how they're feeling. Um, not That's not always the case. But as a reliever, you, that's your one shot. That one inning is your one shot. And if you – that's why I try not to put too much pressure on myself because, you know, you, you have – like Eminem said, you get one shot, one opportunity. You know <laughs> <Yeah>. what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's like I said earlier. It's just kind of up to up to the guy and and what makes you what makes you tick, what makes you go out there and and do your best and have your best stuff. You know, um, kind of beginning of the year would try to do too much stuff. Okay. I, I'm the closing role. I'm the closer. I've got to do this. I'm older guy. You know, I've got to, I got to set an example for the team, you know, and first three outings, all, all were losses, you know? And so I was like, okay, let's take a step back. Let's do some things different. Let's try to work on the mental game first because I was putting way too much pressure on myself where I couldn't throw a strike. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go out there and have fun. Like I did last year, you know? So here you go, hit it. And as far as a closer role, some guys may be different, but as far as me, just, you know, go out there and just have fun. Is is the mentality a little bit different? Because there's been a handful of games where uh, you would pitch the ninth and the game's tied and you would pitch that extra inning. Is there a a different mindset when going into those kind of appearances because you're really normally going one inning and now you have to turn it into two innings is yeah. you know that is the first inning your stuff isn't not not as good but not as a fastball you know you may be touching you know 90s versus you know that first inning you may be touching only the 80s because you're not giving 110 percent right off the bat because yeah. you have to go another inning is there a different mindset or is it just kind of like I i'm just gonna it is what it is and i'm just going out there and throw 110 percent every time not really. I mean, it's the same same mindset. I have full trust in our hitters. You know, if if we go to extra innings, I have full trust that our hitters are going to get that guy in second round. You know, whatever happens after that, 
it's kind of on me because I've got to eliminate those guys uh, on second and in extra innings. Um, so, you know, not really. Uh, it's kind of just 100% the whole way. You know, some pitches, like I've been working on a sinker mm -hmm. and – Moving my, I've been moving my thumb up from what uh, Kent has been telling me to throw a sinker. He said at first just throw it like a BP fastball, so that's what I've been doing until I get more feel with it, and then, you know, then throw it as hard as you can. So those pitches that are in the 80s, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> they're the sinker that I'm just trying to throw like a BP fastball. But uh, no, I, all my whole intent doesn't matter if it's the first, second, or third inning which I haven't gone three innings this year. Thank the Lord. <laughs> but, uh, you know, every single inning has just been a hundred percent, unless I haven't been feeling the best, uh, that outing, I gave up six runs. I don't know what happened that day. It's just like my shoulder gave out and it, it felt like I was trying to give a hundred percent, but my body just felt like it was at 60%. I just, my, I told when, uh, Lamar came up there, I told him, I was like, man, my, my shoulder is just, it's dead right now. I can't even, I can't even lift it up. So, uh, it's been good after that though. Been really good after that. When, when you're, when you're up there pitching and there's so many different factors that can come into play, uh, whether they get a hit and, and, uh, somebody's not there, you know, they hit one of the gaps or, uh, players make errors. Um, umpires not calling strikes. So many different things outside necessarily of your control, right? And and the crap starts to hit the fan. How how do you bring yourself or keep yourself into that focused mentality or that being able to you know not put too much on your shoulder? So I'm kind of gonna gonna go back on my word. <laughs> uh -oh. So when that's when stuff starts to hit the fan, uh, Metallica starts playing in my head. And then I'm like, all right, come on, let's go. Like now I'm in fight mode. You want you want to hit me? All right, come on. I'm I'm you want to hit me in the mouth? I'm about to hit you in the mouth two times harder. So uh other than that, um, I would say when when stuff hits the fan, it's just kind of trying to stay and not do too much because I I do want to, you know, go at you with even harder. And like I was saying earlier, trying not to do too much, trying to calm my emotions and, and stay under focus. Um, a big thing too, is just, you know, trust in my stuff. One guy gets a hit. Okay. I bet you this guy can't get a hit though. It's right. just, he, he, he saw one pitch. Maybe I left that pitch, you know, too middle, middle, or it wasn't <clears throat> in a good spot per se, or curveball was just up or whatever it is. Um, like next time is, all right, let's get that pitch in a better location. If it's curveball, let's get that a little more down or let's throw a fastball a little bit higher and, and get a, get it up more in, in on their hands. Yeah, we, me, me and Kyle, we go back and forth. We're talking about uh, different things when it comes to pitchers. I, I love talking about pitching. And, you know, it, it seems like a pitcher can go out there and trust his stuff, but also trust his fielders behind him that he doesn't have to carry the weight. But when stuff starts to hit the fan, the pitcher feels like, okay, now I have to carry the weight. And then it kind of snowballs because now you're trying too hard yeah. or you're, you're putting too much pressure on things. You're throwing too hard, or what have you, right? And keeping that calm seems to be the secret. You know, yeah. trusting that, hey, yeah, the guy's made an error, but I know they're not going to make another one. You know, yeah. or uh, yeah, he hit the gap, but I know that my fielders are making those adjustments and having – Still having faith in, in those guys behind you, uh, even when it feels like okay, things things are getting rough. Yeah, uh, I to me that that's the conversation we have is you know hey, how how can you do that though? You know that's uh, keeping calm. I, I'm amazed by that. That's one of the things that amazes me about pitchers. You know, I don't really I don't blame my my fielders at all. Doesn't matter if they make an error or a diving play that didn't work out, or if they didn't even run for a ball, that doesn't even bother me. And the, the reason is, is because I blame that all on myself. Uh, I should have made a better pitch so they wouldn't even touch the ball. So your your mentality is more of, I want to strike you out versus let you get 
contact. I know you get the two different kinds of pitchers. You got the strikeout throwers yeah. and you got the people that will allow the hits just that that's the way they're, they're, uh, their pitches roll. So you're more of a strike them out kind of guy. Oh, for sure. Strikeouts are nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. That, that sounds like a Texas thing right there. <laughs> yes, sir. It does. It does. Uh, Chuck, you got any more questions before uh, I ask the last tricky question? Boy, that's, that's going to be a hard one. There's so many. Um, I'll go back. I'll go back to the tried and true favorite baseball team growing up. Astros. Astros, all right. Astros, without a doubt. Grew and, up with uh, Nolan Ryan playing. Uh, then you had the Killer Bees with the Astros. And, you know, they went through trials and tribulations too. And how they turned their org around was just, it was great. You know, I was an Astros fan when it wasn't cool. Mm, um, okay, yep. Is so, it cool now? I don't know. I think it's, it's not cool now. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's getting better. I mean, I, I think it's worn whole, off. I think it's worn off a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I hope, you know, Correa is still getting booed. Like, he was at the all-star game and he was still getting booed. Uh-huh. It's been what? Seven, seven years yeah. since then. Oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think it's finally wearing off, but you know, I just been, been an Astros fan for, since I was born, you know, I, I was literally born with the baseball in my hand. <laughs> so, well, so that that'll couple the next question. When when you were a kid and you were going up on the mound, and it was you know as as a as a hitter, it was always two outs, bases loaded, bottom of the ninth, and I'm going to hit the home run. Right when yeah. you're the pitcher and you're going up, and it's the bottom of the ninth, two outs. What pitcher are you mimicking? Um, I really wasn't mimicking any pitcher. I was just being me, and. Yeah. I did. I did look up to Nolan Ryan my whole life. Uh, I had a, a baseball card where it has his five thousand strikeout oh, wow. um, on on my wall. I think it's, I still have that somewhere. I think it's um, my mom has it somewhere. But you know, I was just you know doing what I did, and I wasn't trying to mimic anybody. I was just trying to you know be who I could be. Uh, but. You know, a lot of kids want to hit a home run in the bottom of the ninth or whatever. But I remember when I was a kid, and this is always, I would always throw the ball against the wall. Always. It didn't matter if it was a tennis ball, uh, a racket ball, whatever kind of ball I could find, it was always being thrown against the wall. My mom would always <clears throat> quiz me when I was in, you know, middle school, uh, elementary school. Uh, I would have to sit down for 10 minutes and study for a test. And then, she would quiz me and then I can go play for, you know, five, 10 minutes, whatever it was. Cause I was just so hyperactive. And then whenever she was quizzing me, I wasn't even thinking about, you know, what questions she was asking me. I was throwing against our stairs with a tennis ball. And I was thinking it was the bottom of the ninth. I was pitching for the Astros and I had bases loaded, came in and uh, I would throw it against the, the stairs, the ball would come at me and I would throw it home or throw it to first, whatever it was, you know, just, just taking those reps. And I, I would, <laughs> couldn't tell you how many times that ball has been thrown against either that stairs or the brick walls outside. And and no idea. Don't no re, you'll remember that, but you don't remember the questions that she was I, Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> hey, <laughs> she was like, what you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, luckily it's it's turned out it's turned out pretty well. That's I think that's gonna answer your question. The fun fact is that yeah. you grew up throwing the ball up against the stairs. Yeah, I guess that they, they kind of did take away my last question, which was we uh, maybe a bit different one. What what's a what's a fun fact about yourself that uh, you like Railcats fans to know? Um, there's quite I have quite a bit. There was one in particular I can't remember what it was. That just if I can think about it real quick. Uh, a fun fact. I can't. It, it just threw me for a loop. You threw me a curveball there. I saw him. See, I always, every everyone. I guess. Um, I don't. I don't know. Maybe. <clears throat> I guess I should probably ask that. I should tell that before we start the recording, so you guys have time to think about. Yeah. it. it's also fun getting the. I don't. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, here, I can give you one. It's going to sound pretty corny, but uh, I, me, and my sister, uh, did like a photo shoot. Uh, like a not really a photo shoot. We took our fo- photos with our our iPhones. Uh, we did the merchandise photos for uh, Parker McCollum, and we were on his website for a long time. Oh, 
Well, hey, that's it's still fun, interesting. So you're a model. Yeah, so, yeah, you're a model now. You put that. In there. <laughs> there you go. I'll go with that. So former model Nate Alexander. Was <laughs> um, <laughs> the closing model for the Railcast. <laughs> there you go. Well, Nate, uh, we do appreciate you uh, spending time on the off day to uh, to jump on for uh, longer than thirty minutes, which we're you know just gotten to talking. But that I, I enjoyed it. I really so enjoyed it. um you know maybe sometime in the off season uh, you want to hop back on. You can. We can have a longer discussion and not you know not take a off in between off days or whatever the case may be. For sure. But uh, we we do appreciate you jumping on and uh we wish the best of luck for the rest of the season. Uh hopefully get more saves out of the opportunity and uh we'll keep enjoying you and on your hard work on the mound. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you all so much. And that wraps up the interview with Nate Alexander. Again, Nate, we appreciate you jumping onto the podcast. It was a good time. Uh, fun to get to know you a little bit better and just talk some baseball. Maybe in the off season we get the chance to talk even more baseball and get really in depth with the thought process of being on the mound and what it's like to be a closer. But that's going to wrap it up for the podcast. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, rest of your evening, whenever you're watching this. Go Cats!